Time for the train to come in. All right. The way they know the party was coming. They're bringing them in all the way from the airport. I love it. Folks, the symbolic nature of why we're here is obvious. The greatest player in the history of our franchise arrived here. That's right. Let it happen. Arrived here to start his illustrious NBA career. I believe it was this week, 21 years ago. And everything changed. So much was already poured into the franchise when the Arison family took over this situation and decided in 1995 to bring in our president, Pat Riley. But something else happened after coach and Tim Hardaway and Alonzo Mourning poured that foundation with so many others. His arrival took us to a whole other place. I remember sitting in Connecticut, Dwayne, your rookie season, and watching that amazing March you all had, literally in March, one of your favorite months, and watching you in that first round, I think it was Tony Fiorentino said it, Stan put it in the hands of the rookie, and he delivered. And then when you went to, in the second round and went chest to chest with Jermaine O'Neal, and my colleague Eric Reed said, look at him, he's Superman. And he Reed, you were in the right cinematic environment because we found out Superman was also Flash. And then that big diesel truck rolled up and you had the combination that led us with Shaquille to the first championship. Thank you, sir. In 06. Told your friends to all come hang out in 2010. And then in 12 and 13, two more banners go up. Somebody asked me recently, well, how many times are you going to have these forever moments for Dwayne Wade? I said, we're going to have them forever because he earned it. So our town is this beautiful place where everyone comes from around the world to have their vacations. Some of us are smart enough to have staycations and it's that beach to the east of us where most of us have that fun. And in the morning, that sun rises and then there's nothing quite like a sunrise here in paradise. But when that sun sets, it has to move to the west. And that's where we find ourselves now. Doesn't mean the end, it means a, a day's job is well done. And every single day, for the rest of your life, for the rest of our lives, forever, when that setting sun rolls down what some people believe is 7th Street, but all of us know is Dwayne Wade Boulevard, when that setting sun and its beautiful golden hue comes rolling down that street, it's going to hit this spot every day, forever. Honoring number three, Dwayne Wade. And to lead us off, who better than to represent all the men that you lined up against in the arena to find your way to this forever space Ladies and gentlemen, he gave us 20 years of fantastic work on the floor and leadership. Make some noise for the Captain Emeritus, Miami Heat Vice President, Udonis Haslam. Dade County, where you at? Now, Wade County, where you at? I can't even tell y'all the quiet, shy, very, very low-spoken young man that I met 21 years ago. The journey, I think it's in the journey. 
the message is in the journey. I think people are defined by those defining moments. A lot of people have great careers, but we talk about defining moments. Who are you in those defining moments when your back is against the wall? When the lights are not shining? Who are you in those moments? And I got a chance to find out who Dwayne Wade was in those moments. That's why he's my brother, because we relate on so many different levels that has nothing to do with the game of basketball. Woo! Nothing to do with the game of basketball. He's a man. He's a man who stands up for what he believes in. He's a man that if he believes in it, you cannot tell him anything different. You will not tell him anything different. I often ask him, don't nobody ever tell you no? <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, no. <laughs> and I understand that now, why? Because he taught me how to dream. See, sometimes when you grow up in adverse circumstances or you grow up in inner cities, you really don't dream. You kind of know what you see around you every day kind of fall into the path that you walk, of the people that walk before you. Sometimes those paths don't go very far. But we talk about a kid from the south side of Chicago, Robbins. Came down here and when I met him, I swear to God, he had 12 cavities in his mouth, y'all. 12 cavities. We spent the first day together in the goddamn dentist. Excuse my language, everybody. I was in the dentist waiting for him for six hours. Six hours. This is the man who I got to know. This is the man who has grown into fashion. Leader, <laughs> entrepreneur, father. I mean, the list goes on and on. And you talk about somebody and how you measure somebody is, how is it when they leave? How was it when they came? And how, and how is it when they leave? And I'll tell you about this city. This city is better since you came here. This city is better. These people are better. A true leader brings people together. You have brought this city together beyond measures that you will never understand, my brother. You might see South Beach. You might see Wynwood. You might see Coral Gables. But Liberty City, Overtown, Googs, P. Ryan, Hialeah. They might not be able to afford the tickets, my brother, but you have brought a joy to them that you will never understand. Never understand. And I thought this was my city. But when I walk around this city and I get love, the love, 50% because of you. 50% <laughs> because of you. I'm going to be honest with you. So today, my brother, you've given so much to the city. You've given so much to these people. You've given so much to me as a brother. You've given so much to your family. You've given so much to this heat organization, Coach Pat, Spo, the brotherhood, the guys that sit here behind me that played with you, that have you impacted their careers and their life beyond measures that you would not understand. We have the opportunity to give something back to you. And I know you're never nervous. I know you think you're cool as a fan, but the day boy, I see it in your eyes, you shook. <laughs> you ain't see this coming, and neither did I. But that's the beauty of it, dog. You put the work in, and you deserve it, my brother. And I'm just happy, to, and I'm honored to be a part of your journey. I love you forever and for life. You continue to inspire the people around you. You continue to inspire your village, and you continue to inspire the 305. And today, dog, you're officially 305 for life. So everybody throw them 305s up for my homeboy. Y'all know what it is. I love you, my brother. Thank you, 305 for life, y'all. That's right. Keep it going for you, Donis Haslam. As winter turned into spring in 2003, Dwayne Wade was exploding on the scene with that Marquette across his chest. And in that regional final, decided to drop a triple-double to send Kentucky out of the tournament. Now, Spo says all the time that there are players that you watch and they may break your heart, and every now and then you bring them into the fold. And I think that is exactly what happened for Patrick James Riley. As he saw his Wildcats go down, he didn't hold it against you. He brought you here. For more on that and so much more over the years, put your hands together for Miami Heat President Pat Riley.
to the Wade clan right here, man. I mean, for all these years, it's just been incredible. But what I saw each and every day, I can't really, you know, chop it up like Udonis can. He's got an OG podcast where they use four-letter words and talk a lot of stuff about coach back in the day, but... This is not about that right now, UD. One day we'll have that. Put your statue up here, you know, but you got the wrong side. You know, I'm taking a look at the Dwayne Wade that I know on this side, this picture of an angry, competitive, in your face, I ain't going to take it. I'm not going to go out like this competitor. I mean, you just, for all of you over there, you've missed it. When you see it on this side, everybody here knows what we're talking about. <laughs> you know, that's how I saw him every day in practice, how I saw him every day uh, all, my, uh, all my career with him. But I'm not going to chop it up. I'm just going to say, wow, okay? Uh, things that commemorate, you know, a great history, you know, with teams, you know, world championship banners, names retired, streets that are named after players, Hall of Fame inductions, court dedications. Now this statue, one day, you know, I don't know what it is because I haven't seen it, so I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag <laughs> with what it is, but I, I have a good feeling. But as the greatest player ever in Miami Heat history, yes it is, it's his day. It's his day, it's his family's day. A great poet once said, fame is a vapor, popularity an accident, riches take wings. Only one thing endures, and that is one's character. Udonis talked about that character. Very famous, really popular human being, Dwayne Wade, who became very rich in many ways above and beyond this monument here. Dwayne Wade was, has, showed tremendous character that will be emanating right from behind me day in and day out, night in and night out. Come rain, come shine, come anything. Dwayne Wade's, and I won't name it, will keep alive forever for always the character emanating like an open arms feeling when people stand before it. Should they dance? Should they pray in front of it? Should they kneel in front of it? No. Should they tell stories? No. Just stare, please. Explore all the crevices, shapes, curves, and expressions that you're gonna see in this tremendous statue. I feel that welcoming character, power, and strength. I feel it, I feel it right now. Not because he's sitting there, because there's an eight foot incredible statue standing behind me that's gonna be showing that to everybody night in and night out. It comes from those Dwayne Wade great moments like the infamous fourth quarter when it all seemed like lost in 2006. Down 15 against Dallas. I was all over their ass as we're about ready to get blown out of the World Championship Series. Dwayne Wade said one thing, I am not going out like this. Well, we did not go anywhere but to our first world championship when he took over and completely dominated anyone in front of him in that title run back in 2006. That was our first. This is our first. Okay. That was not the vapor of fame playing that day or immense popularity or surely not simply a rich approach. It was Dwayne Wade's character driven by an out of this world performance and tough-minded championship player, elevating his talents to another level. That's all I ever knew about Dwayne. Always elevating himself to another level. His family, his friends, the people who he knew cared about him. Dwayne, I loved you as a player. I love you as a person. I love you as a champion. But I admire you more as a man, a husband, a father, a friend, even more. Thank you again for all you did for this city and for this franchise. These moments don't just happen. It's the family within, led by ownership, okay, and the patriarchs, Zoe, Udonis, all the others that have been here. 
I just say congratulations to a wonderful, wonderful player and a better human being. To Gabby and family, I love you for everything, man. Congrats. Have fun. Enjoy the night. I'll come out and chip away at it every now and then. Thank you, everybody. One more time, everybody. Pat Riley. Of all the many things that Dwayne is, one of those things on that list is a New York Times best-selling author, the book titled A Father First. And Dwayne, while I'm 10 years older than you, we're in this exact same spot and handing our young men, our oldest sons, this responsibility in our family to carry everything forward. And with that in mind, it is with great pleasure the young man who reminds us how Dwayne used to look when he was a young man. <laughs> Put your hands together for Zaire Wade. So I was going to bring notes up here, but I'm just going to talk from the heart. Um, so I appreciate you. I think why this is so dope um, of a moment is because, just like me and Pops talked about, this is one goal that I don't think you set going into your career. Um, this is something that happens um, through your hard work, through success. Um, but it's just so dope that he had other things set as far as accolades go, and he crossed all those off, as we know, um, from the all-star appearances to the championships to all that. But, to achieve something that wasn't necessarily set in mind is something special. So I'm not here to talk about the accolades necessarily, but more so the man that is behind the statue, as you guys are going to see. Um, for me, he's a father first, um, like we've always talked about. Absolutely, absolutely. Fight father first. No, but I think that goes over a lot of people's heads sometimes. Um, no matter how that may get misconstrued, I can tell you firsthand from many different examples. Um, Starting with some of my favorite, some memorable ones. Um, just the things that you installed and instilled in me as a kid to make me the young man who I am today. Um, starting with one of my favorites, um, just perseverance as a whole. No matter what you do in this life, you will have obstacles. This goes for everybody out there. Um, I want to share what my father taught me. You will have obstacles. There will be ups and downs. Um, it is important to believe in yourself. Um, it's important to chase something that maybe only at certain times you can see, but um, you gotta get up every day and continue to put in the work to reach the outcome of what's on the other side of hard, as we always talk about. And um, just in obviously me entering my journey, being able to watch you firsthand since I had cornrows and we was at the apartment in our cat days, um, it's just such a blessing because I know all the hard work that you put in behind closed doors. Another story I kind of want to give to you guys. Um, I don't know if well, you, you know, but we don't ever really talk about this story too, too much. Um, it, was after, it was after a game, and I know I played. I didn't really play to the best of my ability, I say. And I was hanging my head low. Um, I was embarrassed, to be honest, right? And um, that was the moment that you just, you looked at me. Um, obviously, acting was wrong, and you gave me a hug. We didn't talk about the game. We didn't talk about accolades and talk about stats. You sat there and you showed me what it is to be a loving father before anything. Um, and I think ever since that day is when I really felt comfortable in myself, obviously on the court, but also as a man off the court. You gave me that confidence and just such a simple moment um, that may go over people's heads. But like we always talk about, you are such a moment guy. You know, so, I know there's a lot of naysayers, and, and it's going to be that, but there's not been one person who came up to me and has something bad to say about a moment that you've had with them. Um, you cherish those moments. You've taught me and my brothers and loved ones around how it's important for us to cherish those moments as well. Um, so thank you. Before I finish, uh, I want to give one more. Basically, it's, a, it's an analogy that my pops taught me, and I go about it every day. I want you guys to take it with you. Um, parents, teach it to your kids if you haven't, but enjoy the traffic. Whatever you do, enjoy traffic. Um, basically meaning that 
you know, we all have a GPS necessarily, and we're all in a hurry to get there, especially when we see the red or the yellow on the map. It's blocking us, and we're going to be late. Um, but sometimes you got to sit there and enjoy the traffic. Um, you know, my dad likes to say, turn the volume down uh, and just be at peace with what's going on in the moment. Stay present, stay focused, and um, I appreciate you for teaching me that. Obviously, on my journey, I continue to take it day by day, do my part. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that translates to continuing your legacy. Love you, Pops. Thank you, Zaire Wade. All right, Heat Nation. We are just moments away from unveiling the Dwayne Wade statue. Uh, that's not gonna get it. You guys gotta give me more. Give me more, 305. Give me more. Let's go. Give me more. Give me more. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's count it down. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? 
Y'all look at this. Y'all got videos, photos. This is crazy. I, um, I didn't really prepare a lot for this moment, actually. I got a book up here. There's only a few things in here. And I wanted to, um, I wanted to feel this. You know, life, is so, life goes by so fast. And it's very rare that we get to feel things because we always off to the next thing. And so I didn't prepare much because I just wanted to feel this, man. I wanted to look at it. Like, that's crazy. I can't believe that. Who is that guy? Um, be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. And faithful in prayer. None of this happens without the person I call the big guy. And that's my God. And so I want to thank my God for this moment, first and foremost, before I get going. I've just been thinking about, like, what I'm going to say. I've written so many speeches. I've thanked everybody as many times as I can. I've come up with cool phrases and cool words to express these different moments. And I didn't have it for this one. I couldn't think of anything because this is out of body, y'all. This is nothing that you can dream of. This is nothing I ever thought I would experience. I didn't play for this. I didn't pick up the basketball for this. I picked up the basketball to change my family's life. My dad put the basketball in my hand and I kept going because I wanted to change my family's lives. And I know there's so many of you out here that are having that same dream daily, that is waking up and walking in that same air of, I want to be the first. I want to do these things. I want to make my mom and my dad proud. I want to one day make my kids proud. I want to one day make my wife proud. I, what all the things is, we all, all of us have similar thoughts. And if you're lucky enough, and you're blessed enough, you have similar experiences. Um, and I, 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 I can't make, I can't write this script any better. I have a production company and we ain't, we ain't done this. We ain't been able to write this script. Being drafted here, I didn't know nothing about Miami. <laughs> Actually, when I came in for my workout, it was nighttime. I didn't get a chance to see nothing. I saw the gym and I saw a plane out of here. And then I got drafted here. And the first thing I remember is walking in. Well, after they sent the PJ for me, thank you guys for that. I'd never been on the PJ before. That was, that was my first time. But walking in and, getting, and meeting Pat Riley, that was crazy. I don't think y'all know how cool Pat is to, uh, to us in the basketball world. And um, sorry, Chris, but black women love Pat Riley. So <laughs> my whole family loves some Pat. And I got to walk in here and I got to meet that guy, that man. And the first thing he bought me was the playbook. And it was a thick ass playbook. And I, I'm a hooper, so as much as we were celebrating, all I could think about is I gotta learn this playbook. And I remember after that press conference, photo with my son and Pat together and talking about being the first, the fifth pick in this, on, this, um, on this team, I remember going back to my hotel at the Mandarin Oriental. And I remember once my family, everyone went to sleep, my sister, everyone was there. I remember sitting there thinking to myself, I'm 21 years old, I'm from the hood. Like UD said, I got 12 cavities, a couple root canals needed in there. Uh, I'm rough around the edges, as they would say. But I remember sitting on that balcony, and I remember thinking to myself, 
Oh, it's all on you now, kid. They didn't draft you just to make the roster. They drafted you fifth. They drafted you here to change the organization. We were a 25-win team before I was drafted. And so I took that upon myself that day to say I was going to do everything in my power to make sure that the people who continue to believe in me and believed in me, that I can, I can pay them back on that. And so the moves and the decisions over my career to play with other guys and sacrifice whatever y'all think I sacrificed um, was to pay them back for that, was to pay you guys back for that. You guys embrace me, Miami. I'm a kid from the inner city of Chicago. I came here not knowing anything about this culture. I still don't speak a lot of Spanish. I, I damn sure didn't speak none when I came here. Um, and you guys embraced me. And I felt the home here right away. And that's not, that just doesn't happen. When you sit in that draft room and you don't know where you're going to go, you don't know where your family going to live, and to come here and to get embraced right away, all I wanted to do was make sure that I give back that same feeling. And so I hope I've given that back. Um, I one of the luckiest men in the world. Um, not because people don't say no to me, because I get a lot of no's, trust and believe. Um, but people believe in me. And I think that's the thing right there, man. When you're growing up and you're young, people don't believe in you. They don't believe in your dreams. Man, think about it, told somebody, hey, my dream is to go to the NBA, win three NBA championships, have 13 all-star appearances, play with some of the greatest players ever have a statue one day, be in the Hall of Fame, have jersey retirement, travel the world. You think somebody was going to tell me that that was going to happen? No one is going to just believe in your dream unless they see you working towards that dream and that belief. And so... The reason that Udonis... And before I get into a fight with him, UD, because if I don't say UD and I say it's government, we're going to get it's going to be problems. The reason UD can say that this is my city, a person who's from here, who went to college here, who did it, who's won three championships here, who spent his entire life besides that one year going overseas to go prove himself and show everybody who he was. The reason he can say that is because he's seen the work. And the work is the reason that we're here. We're not here because the Miami Heat organization like me. We're here because we're champions. You don't get this unless you win. You understand that? You guys are winners. The city is a winner. The state is a winner. We won championships, y'all. And so the work that was put in behind the scenes when the doors was closed was some of the hardest things that we've ever done to believe. And so I'm one of the luckiest one, one of the lucky ones because I had an organization that I was drafted to. I had coaches on the sideline. I had players, not all of them. Some of them we got in here and got out of here. They won the culture. They won a part of the culture. They didn't represent it right. But I had people who believed in me and they believed that I can lead us. And so because of that belief, I gave everything that I had to the game. And that's why I walked away six years ago feeling complete because I gave it all. So before I get to the end of this, for all the young kids out there that are like little Dwayne, that is growing up in at-risk communities, growing up poor, growing up with nobody believing in them, feeling like no one sees you, feeling like your voice is not heard. You can accomplish anything in life. It starts with you, it ends with you. But in between you and you 
is going to be the people that's going to help you along that journey. And that's why I'm standing up here because I believed in me and I understood it was about me, but I had to open up and allow other people to help me get here. Like that guy <laughs> and a lot of other guys. So I want to end with these words, man. As athletes, we all are, it's microphones put in our faces every day about a lot of things, but one word that comes around a lot is legacy. Media asks a lot, what is legacy? What do you want your legacy to be? What is it gonna be when you're done? What will it be? We get all these questions about legacy and I'm gonna tell y'all that's one of the hardest questions to ask, to answer. And so I have words to sum up what legacy is. And when I say what legacy is, legacy for this organization and what we believe in. And those words are from the Godfather himself, from Pat Riley. And these are words and actions that Zoe, UD, myself, and now BAM have held and will continue to hold. Legacy. I don't have a vision of what my legacy is. You have to develop a philosophy. It's an image of a desired state that you want to get to. A house divided against itself will not stand. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? Current Miami Heat players, y'all hear that? A house divided against itself will not stand. You're either in or you out. You don't merely want to be considered the best of the best. You want to be considered the only ones who do what you do. You want to make sure that one day you'll leave some footprints. And I think that legacy is what it's all about. You want to leave something behind that people can follow and that people can hold on to. So to my kids, to my wife, to my mother, to my father, my sisters, my brothers, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, my nephews, my nieces, my friends, my business partners, and my coaches, and to the fans, to Heat Nation, most importantly, to Wade County. Thank you all for following. And I believe I've gave you guys something set in stone to hold on to. This is my house. I'm out. Thank you guys. Thank you.